Okay, so part one. Back in the day, right, we were all naked and we lived on the grass and we felt dirt under our feet and we, we had circles of people around us and we could feel their hearts and we could see their faces and we were all about social connection. Um, and moreover, we were still animals. We really still had to survive. So you really had to be hooked up to let you be able to feel stuff around you. If there was a lion coming, you need to feel that as far away as possible, right? So being sensitive is how you protect your family and yourself. That's how you survive. So just like any other animal, we used to have to be very attuned to the world around us. Um, so I'm basically suggesting that there are maybe seven or so different faculties, different ways that having our nerves hooked up to our organs lets us feel the world around us. And the first way, I think, is that we can feel sound through our organs. Organs are basically just water balloons, right? You know, blind, sorry, deaf people listen to music sometimes by holding balloons and feeling the vibration of the balloons. Fluid membranes vibrate. Our organs vibrate. Your heart vibrates, your stomach vibrates, your, your colon vibrates. Anything that's filled with fluid and is, is trapped in a membrane vibrates. Um, so, let's try something. Let's everybody lie on your bellies. Okay? Now, I'm not going to be able to do fun stuff like this too often, but let's just try it. I did this with my son two days ago. He said he could feel this. So, lie on your bellies, close your eyes, soften your body as completely as you can. Just relax. Totally relax, and especially try to relax your organs. Try to relax your belly. Okay? Now, see what you can feel through your belly. You have to feel a woolly mammoth coming from miles away. Wouldn't you want your belly to be as soft as possible so your organs can vibrate as freely as possible, so your vagus nerve can feel those vibrations as strongly as possible, so you would sense from even miles away that something was coming. You had to move your family. Let's come back up to see you. Did you guys feel anything there? Okay, right. So jiggling organs, right? That's all we're talking about. When I was a little kid, um, I used to be scared of parades because the bass drum would be so loud that I would feel it in my heart. It was like slamming my heart. And I would hide under tables and stuff, you know, because it was just literally, it was such a strong sensation in my body that I could, that I would get very scared. Or if you've ever been in an earthquake, maybe you've felt that rumble, this room. Subsonic, you can't hear it, but you can feel it, right? Or if you ever go to a disco and you stand in front of the speaker and it's just landing into your body, right? So, our organs jiggle. Um, I also want to say that, the, that having your heels on the floor, having the uh, bare feet on the raw earth, allows vibrations to travel up your bones into your belly, right? If you're on shoes and you're many stories above the earth, you can't feel stuff that, that well. You may be able to feel the uh, air conditioning compressor really well which sucks because it's not a good feeling, right? <laughs> but, but feet on the earth lets you feel stuff coming. Second thing is social resonance. Your heart being able to resonate physically with somebody else's heart. Literally, your nervous system can attune with another person's nervous system. My kid got on the car yesterday, right? And, uh, and we were both totally relaxed talking about stuff. And then I asked him one question about a test event. And instantly, my body started <laughs> feeling agitated because his body started feeling agitated. There was no question in my body that I had asked something that was unwelcome. You know, he didn't want to talk about it. He was like, back up. And so you attune with another person's nervous system. I mean, you're supposed to be able to attune with another person's nervous system. It's what keeps you connected. If you can't, if your kid's too young to talk, you know, you have to be able to feel what's going on in their body so you can take care of them. You know, when, when little kids are crying, they're making that, that the crying sound is by itself. 
um, a very disturbing sound, but the dis distress in their viscera that you feel in your body complements that sound and really catapults you into action, right? It's a very strong feeling. Um, or if you've ever gone into a dark room, right, and you instantly bristle, you can feel another person there, even though you can't see them. Nervous system is tuned with other nervous systems, and this comes through the vagus. There's an electrical component to this, I'm quite sure, but I, I haven't been able to find research that corroborates that yet. I'm sure it's out there. But hearts definitely feel other hearts, and we feel in our emotional brain, our hearts, through our vagus nerve. So I'm going to keep marching along here. Sorry I can't take more time. They've done sleep studies where they put people in a basement and just see what their natural sleep cycle is when they can't see the sun. They can't observe daylight. And it turns out that everybody um, migrates toward a 25-hour, or a little bit less, 20 moon cycle, basically. A 24 and 50-minute sleep cycle. Everybody gets up 50 minutes later every day, which is exactly when the moon gets up. The moon is going around the Earth, and the oceans are following the moon. There's a little lump in the oceans that follows the moon from gravity, and that's called tides, right? It's low tide when there's lumps in the middle of the ocean, it's high tide, or high, high tide when it's on the edge of the ocean. We have the same thing in our bodies. Organs are like little mini oceans and little packets, and they follow the moon around the earth, right? The moon goes right around your body, and your body feels this. But we also feel the earth through our organs. You know, being able to feel the bond, the gravity of the earth, downward, pulling on you, is hard to do if you're tense and your organs are seized up, right? But when your organs are relaxed, like a little kid or an indigenous person, you, you know, bellies are soft and organs can move with gravity, right? And they feel the earth. So you feel connected to the earth through your nerves. You feel connected to the moon. The moon moves you. But the sun kind of tugs on you, doesn't it? Have you ever wake up early before your alarm clock and just feel this sort of lifting bodily feeling in your body? Where the, the, you know, maybe four or five in the morning, I suddenly felt this much. You know, you may shrug it off and back to sleep, but, but there's a tugging that happens in your body from the sun rising. There's also a pretty universal practice of taking a nap after noon or having a cup of coffee or some sugar after noon. There's, the sun reaches its zenith, right? And then it starts to go down and your heart starts to go with it. And to prop yourself back up, you take that, you know, 3 o'clock coffee, or the siesta that everybody else gets. We don't get So, gravity. And the ability to feel gravity, feel stuff moving around, you know, there's clearly some selective advantage to be able, being able to feel, you know, the movement of the seasons. I mean, there's lots of reasons, but I've got to just keep going here. Um, integration. The vagus nerve is hooked up to so much stuff, and it goes to one place, your emotional brain. Um, that it's my feeling that it really integrates, gives you a feeling of being one thing, even though there are lots of different parts. You can feel like one thing. Like I used to, um, I used to have these little attacks when I was about 20 years old, where I would sort of lose consciousness. I would just lose my conscious awareness, and I would go into flight, and I would zoom down the stairs over to Brooklyn, and I would find myself at the top of a tree, having climbed up a tree like a crazed animal, you know. Um, but it, to, to me looking back on that now, I see that as my vagus nerve being like, hey, get out of the picture, let me be an animal again. But, but there's a whole body feeling when I was in, um, in the throes of that little kind of attack, um, where I would feel again like I was integrated, where I was whole, where I was undifferentiated, where I wasn't aware of myself, I just was myself. And it's my feeling that the vagus nerve, when it's uninterrupted and unblocked, gives us that feeling all the time. Have you ever seen a dancer, an athlete, move with incredible grace? Michael Jordan or Lynn Swan, if anybody's old enough to remember Lynn Swan, the receiver, never mind, okay. Um, but dancers, yeah, you remember Lynn Swan? There you go, one. Okay, cool. Remember how you leap six feet in the air and catch those passes? Okay. But if you've ever seen a kitten, you know, feel a door slam in their body, they're totally relaxed, and then they just jump. You know, three feet in the air, completely like an electric jolt just went through the body. It's that kind of integration I'm talking about. On top of that, the enteric nervous system, which basically is a second brain in your belly, and it's considered actually a brain these days by neuroenterologists, um, huge, huge nervous system structure, basically centered in your small intestine, um, manufactures drugs 
opiates, um, benzodiazepines like Wits and Xanax and Valium, um, and all the neurotransmitters, like eight or ten of them, but you know, like serotonin, dopamine, these all come from your gut. They're made there. And what connects your gut to your brain is your vagus nerve. It's this big highway that connects them. It's like the messenger system. And they're supposed to be constantly talking to each other, constantly balancing each other chemically. So if you get a little fritzed out, well, you get a little jolt of dopamine, or whatever it is, you know, however it works, constant communication between the, the brain and the gut. Um, drugs would not work. Psycho uh, psychopharmaceuticals would not work if we didn't already have the receptors for them in our brains, right? That's why that stuff works. Um, and the reason they're there is that we're, we make them already. Our body already can make them. The only problem happens if we somehow lose the connection between the gut and the brain. We lose the ability to balance chemicals and we tend to go a little bit crazy. But it's the nerve of sanity. It's what keeps us totally, constantly sane, chemically. Okay? Yeah. 